guys hey welcome to my channel this is life with lisa i'm lisa to all the new, my new viewers welcome i hope you like the channel to all to all to all of my original viewers welcome back so i definitely missed you guys i definitely did um today we're going to be making cinnamon buns homemade cinnamon buns yes it's labor intensive yes it's a long process um you don't need a bread machine i'm doing mine in the bread machine if you have a hand mixer or, um, you know, like with the beaters, handheld mixer, or even your stand mixer, you could do the dough in there as well, and that's fine. Um, but the ingredients are, in, are essential. If you like cinnamon bun, I promise you, you will not be disappointed in, in this. This tastes just like cinnamon bun. And, and there's a lot of recipes out there, but I promise you, if you try my recipe, you will think it is like top-notch, one of the best. And it tastes just like cinnamon bun. Two things. One, there's a secret ingredient, which is in the frosting. And, and, and then the second thing is your cinnamon. I use a lot of extra cinnamon. And it's the quality of cinnamon. I don't use McCormick's, which is a good cinnamon. I use um, a grade AA, and I actually get it online at Penzi's. And I used to go into Cinnamon Bun and get their cinnamon. Not the one that you could sell like in the little, you know, like um, McCormick's cinnamon. But I used to, they used to take it right out of their big tub and give me like two cups. So anyway, but the ingredients are essential and so is it butter. You have to use butter in your filling and in your icing. That's what makes it gooey. So stick with me and I, I really believe you will like these cinnamon buns and um, they're very well worth it. Okay, I mean they're fattening too. Yeah, so you won't be making them every day or once a week. But you know, for like Christmas or a special occasion and it's very well worth it. And yeah, I promise you it will taste just like cinnamon bun. Okay, guys, so as I said, I'm just going to go over some of the basic ingredients and explain why I use them. And I promise you, I truly believe if you use butter instead of margarine in the one part of this recipe, in, in the filling part, it's not going to be as gooey. You're not going to get that milk factor. And I'll explain it as I go through. I use, for this, only King Arthur unbleached bread flour. I think it's a top grade flour. I think it's one of the best flours out there. Um, and there's several other products out there, but... That they make, but I love the unbleached flour. Um, what else what did I want to say about that? Um, when you're looking for flour, do not, do not use, when you're making some of your baking stuff, especially like the cinnamon uh, buns, cinnamon rolls, do not use cake flour or general purpose flour or self-rising flour. The amount of protein in a one-fourth cup, which is 30 grams, should be four grams. So every for every one-fourth of flour, when you're looking at flour in the store, for every one-fourth cup, this should be four grams of protein. The protein is an extremely important. You need the protein. You want the protein. And that's a high amount of protein. Um, the, shower, the, the flour should also include malted barley flour. Malted. It should have malted barley flour in there. And select the flour that has not been bleached or bromated. Um, I think, uh, and there was one other thing I want to say. Oh, make sure it's high gluten. This is this one here is high gluten. It is hard red spring wheat flour, and I think that's best. Okay, there's a tablespoon of my vital wheat gluten flour. I use a tablespoon, which is our yeast. Hold on, guys. Okay, they stopped making the one I used to use. I used to use SAF Perfect Rise Gourmet Yeast. They stopped making that. Long story short, um. You could buy, and it came in a package uh, envelope like this. For a substitute, you could use this. Or you could use a tablespoon of this. I'm going to go this way today. Okay. Make sure you look at that expiration date. And you got to always respect that expiration date when it comes to yeast. You have to. Because um, you have be, you'll waste all those ingredients because it won't uh, rise correctly. Um, what else do I want to say about it? Instead of using, so instead of using, like I said, the one-fourth envelope, you could use one tablespoon of this, which I'm going to do. I put mine, when I'm done using this, I store this in the refrigerator. I mean, but they're delicious. If you like cinnamon buns um, from, uh, you know, cinnamon bun, right? You will love these. I promise you, they taste just like cinnamon bun. There's a lot of recipes out there, um, but I promise you, this is a winner. You will love this recipe. It tastes just like if you walked in. Anyway, so let's talk about vanilla. I'm not using vanilla extract. I'm only using vanilla flavor and lemon flavor. This lemon flavor will be going into 
the icing and just a hint of it, like one eighth of a teaspoon or even a little bit less. This is for me my secret ingredient. Um, where everybody else just uses uh, vanilla um, and maybe powdered sugar, you know, etc. with the cream cheese, with or without cream cheese if they use it. I always put in lemon, always. Makes a big, big difference. That is what helps you make it taste like cinnamon buns. You know, from cinnamon bun. This, I use only the vanilla flavor and not extracts. Okay, and, and there's no alcohol in them. That's why I use them. There's no alcohol in this. And I feel when you use the alcohol in the icing, it doesn't come out as fluffy. And believe it or not, it's the little things like that that I do make a difference. So again, when you're making your icing, do not get vanilla extract, get vanilla flavor instead. No alcohol. Guys, as far as the egg goes, um, this is an extra large. If you're gonna use a large egg, one large egg, you have to put in at least um, one tablespoon of milk. So if you're gonna use a large egg, add an additional one tablespoon of milk. If not, just use one extra large egg. How do you do? That's what I'm going to do. Oh. And you guys, you have to be careful of your water, your tap water. I'm gonna only use bottled water because there's chlorine in tap water. And that's gonna mess with the gluten and, and, and become it all nice and elastic. And that's what you want, right? You want it to go all fluffy. And sometimes chlorine kills that yeast and it prevents it from getting, um, you, you, it prevents you from getting the end product you're really looking for. So if you want, use bottled water, or if not, if you use tap water, let it sit out for 24 hours. That will um, help you. I think I said, because there's chlor, I think I said, because there's chlorine in the water and that's what's gonna kill your yeast. So if you let it sit for 24 hours, you won't have that problem, okay. For the dough, because I, I, you, I told you guys, if you watch my channel, when I cook or bake, I only use salted butter, only use salted butter. And I don't adjust my salt in my recipes. But for this recipe, I use unsalted butter. I don't even know what brand this is. It's just that I don't use it other than just for this here. And I only wanted two sticks and I'm only gonna use one stick. Um, so, and if you are gonna use, if you do have salted butter, that's okay. Just cut down the recipe, the salt in the recipe to one fourth teaspoon. Again, try to use unsalted butter. And if you can't, that's okay. Use regular butter, just cut down by one fourth teaspoon in your recipe. Um, and that's fine. For the margarine, this is the part that goes in my icing. Um, again, this is no salt added. This is margarine. Um, I use blue bonnet. And I used to have an argument with my husband. So I thought this came in a blue package one time. And, um, and I thought it said no salt, but it doesn't. But anyway, so this is what I'm going to be using. There. And let me just explain what you can and cannot do with the butter and the margarines. If you do not have butter and margarine on hand, you can substitute, and you only have margarine on hand, you can substitute the margarine for butter in the dough. I'll say that again. If you don't have um, both butter and margarine on hand, you can substitute margarine for the butter in the dough and that will come out fine. But you cannot substitute butter for the margarine. You cannot substitute, um, you cannot take butter and put this in your icing and, and for the margarine. I mean, technically you could, and that's fine if you do. That's up to you. But it will not be the same. You will not get that, um, you definitely will not get the same results, for sure, that's a fact. And the finished product won't be that really melty, gooey, stretchy, delicious, melty icing that you see at Cinnamon Bun. Um, so definitely use margarine. What they would use too is a little bit different in color, okay, and I don't know why, but they do use this, and I'll explain this in a minute. Um, and this makes a world of difference. You don't want to use something like McCormick's. You could, and listen, please, I'm not saying you can't use McCormick's, or you can't use, um, oh my goodness, there's so many different brands out there. Um, use whatever you want, but I'm just saying for authentic, and that's the way I, I go, I use this because this is a time consuming and there's a lot of steps and there's like downtime. So when my dough is cooking in the, um, or proofing and doing what it's doing in the bread machine, I'll be working on something else. And we'll be making a coffee cake today. Homemade coffee cake. I just wanted to be clear about the cinnamon. When I say macara, 
this is what they use. It's just that it's a brand name for them. But right here, because I can't pronounce this word, Coronite, whatever that word is, that's what it boils down to. That's a different type of cinnamon. Um, and I've used different cinnamons. He experimented with different uh, cinnamons. And this one comes out the best. And you can order that definitely online. Um, and it's grade AA. And again, when you're looking for cinnamon, you want it to be grade AA. Okay. And I mean, you could do your own. Or it, it comes from Indonesia. Well, excuse me. It comes from Indonesia. You could do your own research on it. Um, but you definitely want that one because that's better than all the rest. Guys, here is the super fine sugar I was talking about. Right here it says, oh, I can't work. Right here it says super fine. Okay. And again, if you don't have it, don't go crazy. Just use regular uh, sugar. I just want to explain one thing. And listen, if you want, you can leave me a comment and I will write it out for you and I'll go into even more detail. If you don't have a bread machine, like this is going to be, um, I'm using a bread machine. And again, I can give you more details of, than what I'm going to say really quickly. Just leave me a comment and I will give you step-by-step -step, um, instructions. Basically, if you do not have a bread machine, that's okay. You can still prepare this recipe. Um, you could use a hand or a stand mixer. Okay, again, you can use a hand or stand mixer instead of the bread machine. Um, you would put all the ingredients, now again, these are gonna be heated up. You would put all the ingredients into a mixing bowl, you know, as they're listed in the recipe. So they have to go in that order for sure. Because if they yeast, the sugar and the salt, you got, you got to. If you're kneading by hand, you're gonna mix all the ingredients well in a mixing bowl. Then you're gonna turn it onto a floured board. They knead by hand for about five to 10 minutes until the dough is nice and smooth and um, like a nice elastic, okay? you can. It's gonna look like a rubber ball. It's gonna be smooth, it's gonna be elastic. You gotta work it by hand by, for like five to 10 minutes. Um, and that, then you're gonna form it into a nice little ball. You're gonna place it into a greased cover bowl and then you're gonna cover it and you're gonna let it rise for about um, 45 to 60 to even maybe 70 minutes until it doubles in size. You're gonna do that in a nice little warm toasty place um, and then you're just going to go on with the regular, once you're done, then you're just going to follow the regular recipe. That's how you would do it by hand. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and if you're going to do it in a stand mixer, I think you guys, you know, we have the paddles for that. After you're mixing all the ingredients, you're going to put the knee, you're going to knead with the dough hook. You're going to put the dough hook on, you're going to put it on at low speed, like speed number two. And you're going to do that for about five to seven minutes. You're going to, again, you're going to do it on a low speed. I don't have mine right here to show you, but there's a, a, a number two. You're going to put it on number two and you're going to do it for about five to seven minutes until the dough, again, is smooth and elastic, like um, that rubber ball. And then you're going to form that into a dough. You're going to form that dough into a ball. And you're going to, again, you're going to take that and put it into a grease bowl, spin it around. Okay, make sure it's really well greased. And then you're going to cover that. And you're going to allow that to rise. Um, you can do it room temperature. Sometimes I cheat a little bit. I'll put the oven on 200, but just let's just focus on. You're going to do it at a room temperature room. And you're going to do that until that double in sizes again. About 45 to 60 to even 70 minutes. Try not to peek and uncover it. And then you're going to proceed um, as the recipe unfolds in front of the, you know, the camera. So this is, so I'm going to do mine in a bread machine. So now you have three options. you got the bread machine right here. You have a stand mixer or a hand mixer. Not everybody has a stand mixer. People have, you know, the stand mixer is the one with the big bowl, like a KitchenAid has that big bowl. This is your typical um, hand mixer. You can use this as well. All right. And again, if you want more directions or more step-by-step, -step, just let me know. Very important. And, and again, I'll do a video just about different yeast, which the difference between rapid rise and the instant and this and that, and the bread yeast, and why you can use one for the other, but you can't use one for another, because it gets very confusing. But I forgot to mention, if you're doing it by hand, you have to use instant yeast. Instant yeast, if you're using the hand mixer or this, um, the, the stand mixer, you have to use your instant yeast. East. You follow every one of the directions, but just use instant yeast. And if you're using active dry yeast, you have to proof it 
um, and about a half a cup of water for about 10 to 15 minutes with one teaspoon of sugar before adding to all the ingredients. Let me say that again. Um, if you're using a hand mixer or your stand mixer, you have to use instant yeast. If using active dry yeast, you have to proof it. You proof it by putting it in a half a cup of warm water, not hot, about maybe 110 degrees. And I always test it on the inside of my wrist, like a baby's bottle, okay? Old fashioned, you, you could use a thermometer, but hey, it's old fashioned. You want it to be oh, maybe a pinch warmer than what you do for a baby's bottle back in the day, okay? And you, so again, you're gonna, um, it's gonna be warm water, not hot, because you will kill the yeast put a nice warm water, a half a cup of warm water, and you're gonna put your um, yeast in there along with your sugar, one teaspoon of sugar, and you're gonna let it sit there for 10 to 15 minutes. It's gonna get all thick and it's gonna bloom. It's gonna get all puffy and you'll see and it's amazing, I love it. All right, bye. If you're doing it by hand, you have to use instant yeast. Instant yeast if you're using the hand mixer or this, um, the, the stand mixer, you have to use your instant yeast. You follow all the directions, but just use instant yeast. And if you're using active dry yeast, you have to proof it um, in about a half a cup of water for about 10 to 15 minutes with one teaspoon of sugar before adding to all the ingredients. Let me say that again. Um, if you're using a hand mixer or your stand mixer, you have to use instant yeast. If using active dry yeast, you have to proof it. You proof it by putting it in a half a cup of warm water, not hot, about maybe 110 degrees. And I always test it on the inside of my wrist, like a baby's bottle, okay? Old fashioned, you, you could use a thermometer, but hey, it's old fashioned. You want it to be oh, maybe a pinch warmer than what you do for a baby's bottle back in the day, okay? And you, so again, you're gonna. Um, it's gonna be warm water, not hot, because you will kill the yeast. But a nice warm water, a half a cup of warm water, and you're gonna put your um, yeast in there along with your sugar, one teaspoon of sugar, and you're gonna let it sit there for ten to fifteen minutes. And it's gonna get all thick, and it's gonna bloom. And it's gonna get all puffy, and you'll see, and it's amazing. I love it. All right, bye, guys. I'm gonna put my light on. What I did was, you know that big bag of King Arthur flour? I emptied it in here because it's easier. When you do this, because you're not going to want this packed, you're just going to fluff it, put your hand in there, fluff it up a little bit, okay? Get some air in there, just fluff it up because it's very dense right now. Just fluff it up, just like this. Just uh, getting some of that denseness out, just a little bit, because it's so packed. Okay, and when we measure bread flour, we don't pack it in. My hands are dirty. Let me just get a knife so I can show you what I'm what we're talking about. What we don't do. Okay, when we do the flour, we don't go pop, 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 and pack it in and scoop it off. That's too much. We're just going to scoop it in. Okay, and that's it. That's what you're gonna do. I just want to show you step by step what I'm doing. I melted one stick, which is a half a cup. A half a cup is one stick. One stick of unsalted butter. Um, and hold on. And here's my flour. We just got done with the flour, right? Okay. There's the flour. That's it's four and a half. This is four and a half cups of flour. Okay. So now I'm gonna add. Before I add that, hold on. Let me just rinse my hand off. Hang on. Okay. Let me get something to dry it. Okay, so now I'm, in this cup here, I have one cup of milk plus one fourth cup of bottled water. Again, the chlorine aspect. If you're going to use tap water, I suggest you let it sit for 24 hours. Um, otherwise, you take a chance of killing your yeast. So now I'm going to add the butter to this mixture. Actually, you could keep it separate. You could just, this has to not be, this part is not 110 degrees. This is about um, between 75 and 85 degrees.
degrees, which again, that's more like your um, true baby bottle so you don't burn the baby's mouth. You know, when you do one tennis a little hotter than her, uh, baby's bottle looks like a baby's bottle but just a little bit warmer um, this is more like a baby's bottle so anyway um, you could keep it all separate you could just mix it so now I'm gonna cool down the butter because I let it cook a little too long melt a little too long um, put it right in here and that's it so now I'm gonna stir that together and then I'm just gonna add this right into my bread machine and I'll show you all the steps so we're going to start doing that now I have to remelt it a little bit because the milk was not room temperature all right so let me go um, remelt this a little bit guys please excuse the other clutter in this area here I'm, I just have a lot of cooking to do um, so anyway we're going to start putting the ingredients in the right order this is the right temperature so I'm just gonna dump the water of the milk. There's one fourth cup water, one for uh, one cup milk, and one stick of butter melted. I'm gonna put that in. Now it looks a little hot because I have my air on right now, and I think it's the steam because I tested it and it's fine. Um, next, we're gonna throw in my egg, which I beat. Okay, we're gonna throw that in. Let me get something to do that. That, put this in the sink. Um, then we're going to start adding my vanilla flavor, my salt, my sugar. So vanilla flavor. Okay, so here is my one-fourth uh, vanilla flavor. I'm going to probably take just that little pinch out. My hand's a little shaky because so my sugar is a little low. So put that in there. I'm going to get my lid. Next, we're going to do a half a teaspoon of salt. So let me measure that out. Okay, I'll do it over the sink. So I'll spill it. And if you were using salted butter, this is where you would use one fourth of a teaspoon and cut back a little bit. There's your salt. Okay, that was a half a teaspoon of salt. Next, I want my tablespoon. We're going to be putting in um, my flour, oh, my sugar, a half a cup of, this is super fine sugar. Again, you can use regular, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. A half a cup. Just pushing it all around. You want to make sure um, your little paddle in the bottom is securely in there. Next, we're going to put the flour in here. This is the uh, four and a half cups of flour. Okay, I'm going to do it differently because I don't want to use, lose any flour. Okay. See if I could dump it in there without spilling it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we get it all out. Okay. Put that there. Next is going to come my vital um, gluten flour. Let me cut it open. It says there. Plus. I'm going to be using a tablespoon. Let me flatten this out a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Let me even that off. One tablespoon exactly. You don't got to mix that in. And then we're going to do the yeast. You can use one package of 
the yeast or this I showed you, that's one tablespoon. So it's gonna be one tablespoon. See that pop? That's good. That's what you want. It's fresh. Okay, guys, let's get this in here. It's the one tablespoon. Okay. Let's go in here like that. Now I'm going to put it on my, I'm going to put it into my bread machine. I'm going to put it on the dough cycle. And if it, I'm going to peek at it after the first couple of minutes. If it looks too dry, I'll add a little bit more liquid. If it's too wet, I'll add a little bit more flour. But it should be just perfect like Goldilocks. Guys, this is it. My number 26 for my bread machine. And I have an hour and 50 minutes. And so I need one. Guys, I thought this was important to say. I went to put my yeast away, right? I use this one. See where it says instant yeast right here? But it says rapid rise. Again, I will can do another video where I show you about yeast. But don't get confused with active dry yeast for bread machines. This is totally different. Okay. And then now we're going to work on the filling part. It's going to be simple, simple, simple. It's going to be one cup of brown sugar. I use light brown sugar. Okay, I'm gonna use, for me, the key ingredient is a lot of cinnamon. So I think some recipes may be two tablespoons, maybe even three, I use five. Um, and one stick, which is a half a cup of margarine. Unsalted margarine. Again, margarine, margarine, margarine is what's key. Do not use butter if you're looking for an authentic, traditional, gooey, uh, stretchy, melty icing like you get from uh, cinnamon bun. Okay, you need to use margarine. Okay, so here we go. Okay, guys, I threw in here the one cup of really packed, packed, you can see this, packed brown sugar. You could use a pastry cutter, but I'm going to use two forks and just boom, 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 like this, okay? Like this. I'm going to cut it in like that. You could definitely use a pastry um, cutter. Now I'm going to put in five tablespoons of cinnamon you may think oh my god lisa that sounds like a lot trust me it's what makes a big huge difference try it you will like it i promise i'm not even using a knife to do it see it's kind of a little i wouldn't say heaping but it's not level one Three, four, and five. All right, now the margarine does not go in here. The margarine, once the dough is um, once the dough is done, I'm gonna roll it out in a 15 by 24, and then I'm gonna take one stick of the margarine, which is a half a cup, and smear it all over, other than a one inch border that's gonna be by me. Because you know, you got a rectangle, right? I'll show you on the, the mat later. But the closest part toward me, toward my belly, I'm gonna leave a one inch border. Everything else is gonna have the margarine. So let me get to cutting this in. And you want this to be really mixed in well, really good. Not just like, okay, this is it. You gotta really cut it in there and mash it. So I'm gonna go work on this. Just so you know, sometimes I do it this way too. Like I'll mix it. I'll put the two forks side by side and just really mash it, mash it, mash it, mash it in. Okay. Guys, and this is what it looks like when you're done. Let's zoom in. Okay, I don't know why my um, camera doesn't want to zoom in too well. Let me zoom out. Okay, but it's all mixed in. So now we're just going to wait for the dough and I'm going to start the coffee cake. And I'm not going to clean up this mess because I'm going to be doing the coffee cake right this second. So I'm just going to scoop things over. Please excuse the mess today. And let's get to it. Guys, here is my dough. Look how beautifully it did rise. Okay. Guys, this is 15 by 20. Um, here is my beautiful 
dough. Oh, I just love it. Let's see. One. It just got done. And I'm going to show you um, how beautiful it is. Okay, let me put the pan down. But this is beautiful. Just beautiful. Let's just tuck that back in there. That was from the hook. But you can just see, look, look at the elasticness. Look, it's a beautiful, crispy, airy dough. And what do I mean by crispy, airy? Because the inside is gonna puff up and have all those beautiful air pockets. And it's gonna be so airy to bite. And the top is gonna just get that nice little crispness. All right, now let's start to um, roll it. It's a beautiful dough to work with. Now, I've never done it this way in front of a camera, but. Okay, hang on. I need two hands. So, I'm just going to roll this into a beautiful rectangle and I'll be back. But the dough is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, nice and light and airy. Let's see if we could do it this way a little bit. Um. Usually I do it on my table, but this is what you would do, just back and forth, back and forth, and it rolls beautifully. It's not like a pizza dough, where it's going to spring back. Let's see. And this is it, you just want to keep doing this. So. I'll work on this and I'll get back to you. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a quick peek and you can see how it's coming out. It truly is a beautiful dough to work with. It really is. And it stretches beautifully in the elastic you got it going on in here. So I'm going to finish up and bring it out to the corners now. Okay guys, here we go. I can't even see if I'm filming. Hang on. It is. Okay. Now, you could use a spatula. I'm using my fingers. Here's the border. Later, I'm going to roll it. Here's the border. I'm not going to go one inch down. Everything else is going to get um, the margin. You could definitely use a spatula, but I personally prefer my fingers. And this is a little chilly. Um, hold on. i got to ask kind of question. Ken, shall I shut the air off? Because i got to proof this. And my margarine actually got harder. Well, let me shut the air off for me. I don't know. All right, so anyway, this is what you do. You're going to put a layer of your margarine. You're going to leave this inch, because normally I would be standing on this side. And my stomach would be here. I'm going to leave a border one inch, and I'm going to roll from here toward me. And everything else is going to get the margarine. You can go to the edges. And this, using margarine, is what's going to give you that gooeyness you want. Okay. So I'm just going to work with this. Continue smearing this in. And then I will show you what it looks like. Okay. Okay. I'll be back. Guys, here's that brown sugar mixture. Five tablespoons of, well, I don't want to say heaping, but you saw me, I didn't level them off. Five tablespoons of good, good, good cinnamon and my brown sugar. Okay, now we're going to go up to the border. You can't see the border, I don't think. But I'm just going to go like this. Do every square inch of this, okay? So let me work on this. And then I'm going to take my rolling pin and first my fingers and then I'm going to roll it in with my rolling pin. I'm going to do my border first. And this is going to be a thick layer. This is the gooeyness. It all melts beautifully. Okay. I'm going to work on that spot. So I'm going to go do this and I'll get back to you guys. I'm just going to pat it in first with my hand. 
key to this is you, you know when people sometimes make cinnamon buns or apple turnovers or apple cinnamon buns, they just sprinkle it on like that and have all this plain gaps. You don't want that. You don't want to see dough. This is a thick layer of brown sugar and cinnamon. This is where you get your flavor from. If you want to taste like cinnamon bun. All right, so I'm just gonna press this in. Left my one inch border. I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna take my rolling pin and, you know, but I'm gonna stand in front of it, you know, and just gently roll it in, press it in. Ooh. You just gotta work it in because it's a thick layer. And I'm gonna just go around and do this all um, on the other sides too. See my border down here? Okay, that's the one inch border I left because when you wrap it, you're gonna land up with this. You're gonna roll from up here. I mean, I'm gonna start from way up there and tightly roll it toward me. And then that's gonna be my clean border. Okay guys, we're gonna just keep rolling. But just so you know, there was a few little mini crises taking place. So my dough actually has sat here on this spot for about four hours. And it's ice cold so i'm just hoping like i said to ken i just hope this is not all for naught and you know i hope they do rise because i mean this is very cold it's ice cold actually because my i keep my air conditioner very cold it's like 64 degrees that's how i like it um so all right, i'm just going to continue you can see it's coming toward me tightly wrapping it and pulling it toward me Just like this, just like this. Okay, pull this up. Okay, and we're gonna cut off um, the edges. Like I'll show you. Let me finish this. Okay, and we just pinch it and press it. This is where we want a clean edge. Okay, guys excuse the mess I cut the ends off and here's the ends um and that just comes on the ends over there and on the other side it's 24 inches okay it goes up to 24 inches okay and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do I'm going to go every inch and a half we're going to start Over here, I'm gonna go every inch and a half, let's say, and I'm gonna do a marking. So, uh, come on. Come on down. so, so right here, I'm gonna do a little marking, and this is where I'm gonna cut it with my. I like to, you could use a serrated knife, but I like dental floss, and you would slip it under here like that, crisscross it, and just poof, like that. I'll show you. Okay, let's do another inch and a half. So one, two, so four. Let me straighten that out so it's accurate. Wait, hold on, guys. So that one. I'm trying to think why the hell that is bigger. I did a bunch of that. That is a inch and a half. So here's my other. Okay, so we're going to go like that. Okay, and we're going to do that all the way down. Every inch and a half, I'm going to put a little knife mark. Guys, hold on real quick. I'm going to show you. Um, hold on, we're on the, calling my doctor real quick. 
okay? You slip it underneath, okay, your dental floss. Bring it up like you're gonna tie a shoe. Crisscross it, okay? And then just pull tight, boom. There you have it. Perfect. And I'm telling you guys, delicious. I really don't know if these are going to work. I said it to Ken, like I said it to you, that this is ice, ice cold. And too many hours went by. So, I think I may have to do it again. I don't know. I'll let you guys know. But let's do it again. And I marked it up here. You can see the little knife marks. Okay. I'm going to take it down the floor. Almost like you're going to do your teeth at night. Slip it under. Okay. Bring it up. Do a little crisscross and pull tight. Ah, like that. It comes out so much cleaner, and I just love it. Okay, I want to do one more. Should I zoom in a little bit better? Okay, let me move this one. Look, you gotta floss your teeth, wrap it around your fingers, slip it underneath. If you have to lift it, you lift it, shimmy it over. low sugar alarm um so crisscross it and pull tight voila look at that beautiful and we'll do one more what the heck right so around your fingers like you're gonna do your teeth at night slip it under if you have to lift it oh, lift it hold on I do have to lift it because it's stuck in here. Okay, there we go. Crisscross it. You're going to tie your shoe. If you have to pull it up a little bit more to make sure it's on the line, definitely do. And pull it. Like that. Perfect. Oh, not so perfect. Okay, perfect. And that is it. And I'll do the rest. I say you're going to have 15 rolls. And I'll show you a pan. This is the pan. It's an eight by eight. Oh, let me move it here. It's an eight by eight brownie pan lined with parchment. I'm gonna put one, five in each pan. One, two, three, four, and one in the center to make five. Guys, listen. At the end of the day, if this comes out correctly, which is supposed to, and I've never, ever, 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 once in what thirty years, never had these come out correct. Never. But what you want at the end of the day, you're gonna line this with um, a towel and you're gonna let it rise in a warm place out of drafts. And right now I can feel my air conditioner blowing on my back and on my neck and on my arms. So this is definitely ice cold. But anyway, uh, neither here or there, but what you want is at the end of the hour, you want these all to be touching. They get so big, they touch, they like double sometimes almost triple in size and that's what you want and it helps get that gooey side too yum hey guys no that was inside i'm sorry guys now here is the icing part i'm going to put in one stick of margarine okay the only time we use butter in this recipe is inside um for the bread that well the, the uh rolls i'm going to put in one stick of margarine and then i'm going to do four ounces of Cream cheese. Okay, I'll just, this is an eight ounce package. I'll cut it in half. Um, I'm not sure if they sell three or was it four ounces. But anyway, long story short, the key to this is I only have my hand beaters here. I do not have my stand mixer. This takes about 45 minutes if you're, or even longer, if you're patient and you sit there and you just let it beat, beat. You can walk away if you have a hand mixer. I mean, excuse me, stand mixer. If you have a hand mixer, pull up a seat or sit on the couch, plug it in. And watch something on TV and the time goes by quicker. Um, but anyway, so uh, first we're going to just beat this together. If you have a stand mixer, you would put it in your flat paddle. And you're going to beat this for about 60 minutes on slow. I think that's like, what, 65 RPMs? Um, after that, then you're going to put it in that whipping paddle. The one like if you're going to make um, homemade whipped cream. And you're going to put that on for about 10 minutes at a medium high speed, medium speed. I think it's like 150. I have to check. 
Um, but anyway, so it's, it's, it's a lot of it's a, it's a lot of beading. So I'm gonna be doing it by hand. So probably for a couple of minutes longer for each step. So this one, you know, so probably all together, uh, say twelve, maybe about twenty minutes. I'll do it by hand, just mixing the brown, the the um, cream cheese and your margarine. Okay. So guys, all I did was take that cream cheese slice it right down the middle. Now I'm gonna go beat it. Um, same thing. I'm gonna do low for about not eight, six minutes for about eight minutes. Um, like a low uh, medium. Then I'm gonna do for for twelve minutes, not ten. Uh, like a medium high because obviously hand beaters are different than stand mixer. Guys, I just wanted to show you what this looks like after six minutes, not eight, six minutes with a hand beater. Then I have to do for another two minutes, increase it to like medium high and do that for like 12 minutes. You have to be patient with this. Do not rush this process. This is what's going to make it light and fluffy. And I promise you, oh, so gooey. And you will love it. If you love cinnamon bun, you will love these. I promise you, you will. Okay, now this is what it looks like after beating it for all together like what 20 minutes or whatever it was I'm just going to show you on a knife how creamy you can see what this you can see how fluffy this is look at this it's just so fluffy it looks like whipped cream doesn't it perfect okay now I'm going to throw in um, all together we're going to be using one and three fourth cup of powdered sugar I'm going to do one cup for one minute and then on medium and no low and then I'm going to do a, another three fourths cup for a minute okay so here's the one cup on low and I'll do this for a minute and then we're going to add again our extracts it's not extracts or flavors vanilla and I'm telling you, no more than an eighth, please. Even a little bit less, but you need a lemon flavor if you want this to be, you know, spot on. That is your secret ingredient, is that lemon. Um, okay, so I'm going to go do this. And again, it's alcohol-free. Okay, yeah. Okay, guys, here is my, um, again, it's going to be my, let's do the lemon. Just lemon flavor. I don't know why that's doing that. It just went into the icing, right? Huh. I have no clue why it's doing that. But you can see it. There you go. Okay. So let's get one eighth. I'll show you. This stuff is very strong, so make sure it's level. See? That's it. That is it. Just got that last little drop. So we're not making lemon, and you won't even know what it is. But with that vanilla, mm, it's that little secret ingredient you want. All right, let's do um, a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Okay, let's do this. And again, this is only flavor. Here we go. A teaspoon. Just for a minute on low. Actually, I want to do it on medium. Okay. Guys, what a perfect flavor. It is so good. And you can see. Let me stop for a minute. See? And when you put this on your um, cinnamon buns, oh my God, it just melt and so gooey and it thins out perfect hey guys the icing's done i'm going to leave it and then when the muffins come out i'll probably just give it a quick little a mix let's go look at the rolls hey guys i put one in the oven because i thought i was recording and i was not i was actually recording my floor but anyway they did puff up now mine oh guys i'm sorry i gotta take that phone call it's the doctor is it not the doctor no. all right so the one i just put in the oven puffed up the most you can see this, you can see they're touching. This is what you want. You want them to touch. You want them to touch. They did puff up, but they did not puff up to double the size that I would like them to be. You know, this one puffed up better than this one. But don't forget, I kept mine 
in a 64 degree ice cold air conditioned room with the vents blowing right over me and I was working with this and the dough just sat there for hours because of those little hiccups today, you know, like medical problems. So, um, this is the result, but they're still going to taste delicious. They're going to still rise in the oven, but they could be a little bit bigger, a little bit puffier guys, but they did come out. So I'm pleased. I'm very pleased because I didn't think they were going to do anything. Um, but they do. So we're pleased and they're going to taste amazing. Okay. Just say you're going to bake them, not in a convention oven, because then you would have to lower the degrees to like 310. You're going to put these in about a 330, set your temperature to about 330 in a regular oven, and you cook them anywhere from 13, 15 to even up to 20 minutes. You want this to be golden brown and soft, um, but yet you need the insides cooked, okay? You want the insides definitely cooked. And... I'll show you what they look like because I've been making these for 30 years and still because I'm working with the oven where it's, I think it needs to be calibrated, but you no, know, it's a little sometimes touchy. Okay, bye. Here they are. Now, listen, again, if they didn't sit in an air conditioned room for hours and ice cold, they would have puffed up a little bit more, but this is the color you want. You want them just to be a soft, pale, not even tan color. You have to be so careful because... I think you could get away with another minute. You could. Another 60 seconds. Anything more than that, then you're going to risk overcooking them. These are going to come out a nice pale color, a golden pale. Okay? This started bubbling in there. You could do another minute. But well, I'm happy with this. My other ones, I'm doing it for the extra minute, just so you can see the difference. So let's get some icing going on these. Okay, I'm just trying to... Um, Pretend we're going to do thirds. So we'll just use a little bit now. Put a big dollop on these. It's going to melt right in. You want it to drip all down the sides. Okay, just like this. I'm going to use this a little sparingly now. Just to make sure I have enough to go around. And look. This, I promise you, is so yummy. It's going to all melt and get ooey and gooey. And I'll show you later the stretch in the inside. But, yeah. And you know what? These reheat nicely in the microwave. You put them in for about, oh, geez, 10 to 15 to 20 seconds. Depends on your microwave. And um, it's delicious. With it. See that? Oh, wow. Yum. The cup of coffee. Push it around. You want to definitely in these crevices. For sure, yeah. Okay, this is good for now on this one. I'm just gonna play around with this a little bit more. Make sure I get every little corner. Okay, okay. If there's more, once I do the other ones, I'll come back and put extra on. But these are delicious. Yum. Okay. And I'll open them up. Here is the second batch that came out of the oven. Um, again, these did, obviously, they they did rise. But they usually get twice as big. Um, I mean, they're like oozing out of the pan. That when you put the icing on, it drops out of your pan. So, um, they did rise. But they could have definitely rised more. Um, anyway... This one I cooked 17 minutes. I'll put the icing on. Okay, so I'm gonna take some more of the icing and get it going. Okay, just like this. And Ken's in the background. Ken, why don't you say what you truly, truly think of these? 
they're it's un, undescribable because they're even better to me than the ones you get at Cinnabon. But they're addictive, and I, I hate when you make them, even though I love them because mm -hmm. I can't stop eating them. Everybody says that. You can't. Tell. What you have, you want more. They are addictive. They really they are. are. They're, they're so, the flavors are so good. Yeah. See how that just oozes down? <gasps> Love it. Yum. Okay, I gotta keep some for the other ones. Okay. What else is that, guys? I still have to show you the other one. See how that's all melting? Look at that. Look. Can you see it's still moving? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to finish this. Um, there's a little bit right here. And then I'll get back to you. I'm going to do the third batch. You know, without on camera, you don't need to see that when you store these. Um, and then I'm going to open it. And you can just see how melty this is. Yeah. Okay. You want it in a pool of this icing. Okay. Let me put this here. I'll show you one more time. Yum, yum. Oh, look at that icing just ooze. Let's see if we can zoom in. Oh. Okay, guys. They are good, and you all know what they taste like, too, huh? Guys, this is been sitting in the cold air conditioning room. Let's take one apart. Okay, let's pull one apart. Okay. Mmm. Put that right here. You can see that. Hold on. Mmm. Delicious. Hang on. We're going to break into this. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my God, it's good. Wow. It's not good. Mm. Okay, now it's hot. I'm going to show you the inside. Wait, hang on. See? All that yumminess and all that gooeyness. Delicious. I have another video where I just showed you a little itty bit of it, but that I did last year, but without the recipe. This is, I promise you, delicious. See the inside? Okay. One. That's what the inside looks like. The dough part. Okay. Mm. God, it's good. Can't try this. Mmm. That is good. I don't want to swallow fart on camera ever again. Let's try that. Mm. Oh my God. Mmm. Look at that. It is so tender. Yeah, it's just, it's, it melts in your mouth. Bread is always. Mmm. And that cinnamon. Mmm. 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 Perfect. The icing is spot on. It tastes like cinnamon buns. My hands are disgusting. I have to go clean them, but mmm, that is so good. Mmm. Right, does that sound disgusting? No. Guys, I apologize. I'm going to get off camera because they are that good. Bye.